and welcome to the channel. Today at Sugar Street we are talking cake boards. Dun, dun, dun. Cake boards, that's really boring, right? Who cares about the cake board? We're more interested in the cake. Ah, ah, ah. The cake board is a really, really valuable asset to your cake design. Do not ignore your cake board. A little bit of attention on your cake board is going to elevate your cake it's going to present it in a much better way, it's going to tell that story and it's going to enable you to charge a little bit more for your cake because of the complete presentation. So today we're going to talk about why we need to look after our cake boards and I'm also going to show you how to create this really super quick but effective stone effect cake board. So let's get started. designing a cake. One of my considerations, apart from the cake itself, is the scene that the cake is set within, right? It's all about telling a story from my point of view. Um, and so I will coordinate my cake board to go with my cake. It may be as simple, simple as just covering it in a plain coloured uh, fondant. But more often than not, I like to texture my boards and just make them a little bit more interesting. Um, and there are a couple of fallbacks, techniques that I use quite regularly on quite a lot of cakes um, because they go with quite a lot of designs that don't take an awful lot of um, work. Uh, one is marbling. Now, I've done a tutorial. Um, I can't remember where I put the thingy, but I've done a tutorial uh, at Pretty Witty Cakes to show you how you can easily marble a cake board. The other one is this, it's a wood effect. Um, very, very simple. You can buy texture mats to do this, or you can, um, you can do that yourself. There are lots of tutorials by other great cake decorators online for doing wood effect tutorials. Although if you would like me to do one, just message me below and we can certainly add it. And the third one I wanted to show you which we will show, I'll show you actually in this video and how to do it, is this cobblestone effect. The great thing about this is that you can change the size of your cobbles. So you can go for small, small little cobbles, or you can go for something a little bit bigger, more ras rustic uh, flagstones, or you could go for a brick effect. It's really simple. And actually, all you need, all you need really is the back of a knife. But if you have a, if you have a uh, tri-tip, um, sugar shaper, the link to which is down below, um, that's what I use and it's really effective. A little bit of scrunched up foil and some dust. You don't even need an airbrush machine, so there are no excuses whatsoever. Okay, let's get started. So I have um, created a sort of cream base um, for my cake board by adding a few drops of yellow and brown magic colours gels, but if you want to start with a greyer base, you want to start with a different tone, then just keep it pale, that's my only advice. Spritz the board with a little bit of water, and then I'm going to roll my paste back over, um, back over the cake board. Um, I'm smoothing it with my hands rather than a cake smoother because we're going to texture it anyway so I don't need to worry all too much. Just want to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm using a very nice sharp blade which presumably you will have in your toolkit to trim away those excesses. Um, now, I'm going to show you in a moment that what I use to create our tiles is this. It's a tri-tip chisel sugar shaper. Um, you could use a blade tool, you could use the back of a knife, but I like the wedge that it creates this tool, I think it's great. So I'm going over horizontally, irregularly, because I quite like irregular stones. If you've got a new romance, well I've got the perfect dance. If you need me I'll be here, I'm Mr. Jukebox. And then I'm going in with my tool, and you can see I'm trying to round off those corners. I do not want it tidy. I've scrunched up some foil and I'm pressing that into um, the board. Every night at closing time, 
Johnny's down to his last dime. Still he manages to So buy it's time to round. colour our board now. There are various ways that you can do this. You could use an airbrush, you could paint it, um, or you could marble your fondant and not add extra colour. But actually, we want to get into those nooks and crevices, and the best way to do that, to really highlight um, those stones, for me, is to use dusts. Good old-fashioned petal dusts. Um, I use a combination of colours, depending on how dirty I want to make my cobblestones, or what tones I want to make it. In this case, um, these are magic colours, but obviously you can use whatever you like. I've used brown and lemon, a little bit of black. The other thing that is super useful to use is, oh, the dog's going off, um, corn flour. That just makes it go a little bit further. The other thing that you will need, do -do -do, can you see that? Is a lovely makeup brush, soft powdered makeup brush, to help you get into all those nooks and crannies. Not a used makeup brush, obviously, that goes without saying, a, a new one from a pound shop. Pound shops are great for buying stuff like this. Anyway, I'll stop yakking. Let's go back and see how we, um, uh, how we put the colour together. I like to put my dusts on uh, to greaseproof paper. Um, I find it easier to mix them that way. And as I said, I've used brown, two browns, yellow, a black, and corn flour, which I've mixed in to give me this sort of creamy brown colour. And using my soft powder brush, I am rubbing it into the corners. You noticed I sprayed something on my board. I use this. Shell and Shine, this is a Spectrum Flow one. It's essentially um, an edible glaze in a spray can. And what I, why I like it, especially if I'm working with dry dust, is it sets the colour. If you dry dust a board and then leave it, um, it will transfer. It will go on your hands, it might go on your cake, and you don't want that. In order to avoid it, you can either spray a glaze onto it. This isn't super shiny, which is, which is why it's good in this instance. Um, you can put lots of layers on to make it more shiny, but one layer of this will just set that colour in. Um, or you could wave a steamer over it. The steamer will also set those petal dust. So just bear that in mind if you are going to go down that petal dusting, dusty, dusty route. The dusty, dusty, we need to, you know, control. Um, so you will need to just set those dust. I another round. I watch him. There we have it. Cake boards. Cake boards, cake boards, cake boards. I love cake boards. And you should love them too. If you haven't yet started the process of decorating your cake boards as part of your cake, do it. Really do it. It will make such a difference to the professionalism um, and presentation of your cake. So that's it for this week. I really hope you enjoyed watching. You know the drill, if you like the video and you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, all that jazz. And if there is anything that you would like me to cover, if there is something specific about cake boards, uh, maybe a cake board design, um, or just something, you know, unrelated altogether, just let me know and, you know, I can maybe turn that into a video tutorial. Anyway, I hope you all have a really, really good week and we'll see you next time at Sugar Street. Bye.